Important news for the 2 million Canadians who received a first shot of the AstraZeneca vaccine. The Federal Advisory Committee now says if you've received two doses of AstraZeneca, good, did the right thing. But if you've received only one, they now say pick Moderna or Pfizer for your second. mRNA vaccines are the preferred vaccine for both doses now. So will provinces uh, just toss the remaining AstraZeneca supply? We're going to turn to Dr. Dirk Heyer, Ontario's Outbreak Response Coordinator. Dr. Heyer, I, you know, I recognize you're not part of NACI, the, the federal advisory panel that came out uh, uh, on this, but you'll have to deal with the potential you know, consequences of this recommendation. How do you see it evolving the direction to medical teams actually giving out these vaccines? Yeah, good afternoon and thanks for the question. <clears throat> What, uh, what we know is, uh, I go back to what you started with, is those who received two doses of AstraZeneca, congratulations, you got your full series, and you've got great protection against serious illness, hospitalization, and great protection against infection. And you contributed significantly to our, our double-dose coverage in Ontario and across Canada. Now, turning to the people who have had one dose and are ready to come on their second dose, um, I'm still digesting the NACI recommendations along with the teams that we work with in Ontario, but my interpretation is this is a discretionary, uh, discretionary recommendation that still remains uh, with an option to uh, choose AstraZeneca or an mRNA with their uh, suggestion that uh, it is preferred to have an mRNA. But our view right now uh, in our, our, our initial look, and we will look over the next couple of days, is that we maintain the option that we've already had in place for AstraZeneca, uh, two doses, or AstraZeneca plus mRNA. Again, with informed consent and careful thoughtfulness by the person when they're receiving it. Is there, is there logic, uh, because part of what NASI is noting is that it, when you do that vaccine mixing, if you've had the viral vector, the AstraZeneca as your first dose, and then go and get an mRNA for your second dose, that you in some ways have a, a different kind of protection and, and perhaps in some ways a better protection. Would, would you agree with that? Well, it's difficult for me to say what NASI specifically uh, said because it just they just came out with their recommendations. Yeah. But, what I, but what I am aware of is we have one study and it appears that NASI is uh, basing this on their general vaccine knowledge, but also one study out of Germany where there is an increased uh, antibody response and cell mediated response in those who received AstraZeneca and uh, mRNA and compared with two AstraZenecas. Having said that, while that's good, and, and we totally embrace that, we don't know that that in fact is a vaccine effectiveness mm -hmm. um, measure. And we do know that AstraZeneca of two doses at 12 weeks has very good vaccine effectiveness. So I'm not saying it's, it's it just it's pieces of information that we must use to consider when people make their second choice decision. So let's talk about Ontario. Vaccination rates keep breaking records in terms of the numbers that are administered every single day. Uh, you know, somewhere in the area of 75 to 80 percent of them now second doses. Cases continue to, to drop, hospitalizations down, so are ICU admissions. What What is the possibility that, um, that stage two, step two, that's currently set for July 2nd in terms of reopening could be moved up? Well, thanks, David, for first off the compliment. I mean, the teams in the public health units, the hospitals, all of the vaccinators, people in Ontario are just doing a phenomenal job to get where we are with over 75% first dose and now probably 20% second dose by now with continued significant uh, immunization occurring. So to your question of step two, we just are about a week into step one and step the reason that there's some that I understand from Dr. Williams and Dr. Moore that there's the 21 days between is we want to see if any uh, increased spread occurs with the stepwise opening. So give a time to see if in fact the cases remain low. It's only a week and we want to really be careful on that. So we want to know vaccination is very important, but also the R effective, which is the, the number, the, the likelihood of transmission. We want to know about the Delta uh, variants that are occurring. We want to know about the case numbers, hospitalizations, ICU, and the, the uh, public health unit's ability to catch on to uh, outbreaks very quickly. So all of those factors need to be considered, and we don't want to go too fast. Uh, recognizing that everybody wants to be back to as normal as we can. Mm -hmm. We really just need to stay the course and carefully look at those numbers. Remember, we still had 370 people got cases 
uh, infections uh, today. And, uh, and there still are uh, over 350 people in the intensive care unit. We need to think about ensuring that we get down to the safest possible place. You mentioned the Delta variant there, and when I look at the, the R value, the replication rate, uh, it actually is now ticked above one, meaning uh, we are now seeing growth of that Delta variant on an exponential level. Is that a particular concern? Are we essentially in Ontario in a race now to try to get the vaccines into arms to stop that Delta variant from creating a fourth wave? Absolutely. We want to get ahead of the variants. And it's not just with vaccine, it's also with proper precautions, as we all have been uh, following for so many months. Uh, but really, uh, the Delta variant is more transmissible. Um, we also know that there is a, a potentially greater illness and hospitalization, but we, we do know that the first dose uh, in both AstraZeneca and an mRNA does demonstrate good protection from hospitalization, doesn't have the very good protection against uh, infection, but certainly against hospitalization, very good protection. So absolutely, we want to get the second doses. And those who have not got first doses, we want those people to also come forward and avail themselves of the opportunity to get their first dose because of the significant protection uh, that is associated with it. Somewhere in the area of 21 million doses of vaccine are coming into this country uh, over the course of this month. Does that change the trajectory of when Ontario, for instance, would expect that everybody who wants to have a vaccine will have had it? Absolutely. The more supply we have, the more delivery we can occur, the quicker, uh, or sorry, we can deliver, the quicker that we then um, have people fully protected and that impacts and reduces transmission. And without transmission, then we don't have virus, we don't have cases, we don't have illness, and off we go. So what does that modeling look like? Uh, give me a sense of when you say, think, say, 75% of Ontario's population will be into second dose. Uh, very difficult to say, um, because it really depends on the supply uh, over the next little while. We know that for the first week in July, the, the Pfizer supply is decreased by about 500,000, just, just for a week, and the rest of July will catch up. Um, but it, it depends on the delivery, depends on the uh, a, a, a timing of everything and how people avail themselves of the opportunity. So it's, it's difficult to, to give you the exact modeling because all of those numbers have just changed. We just learned about more Moderna coming. Uh, and so putting it all together takes a bit of time. Can I ask you finally, and I've only got some se a few seconds, people talk about the fourth wave and, and you know, many people think it's not going to happen. Some people worry it will. What would a fourth wave look like in Canada? Well, uh, that's, that's a little bit outside my expertise. That's uh, more of a, a Dr. Williams, Dr. Moore question, Dr. Tam. Um, but a fourth wave in, in Canada would be, I think, very discouraging and very uh, hard for everybody to have to face. But when you we, have so many people who are done. vaccinated, does that change the, the game? Like, does, a, does a fourth wave come with far fewer hospitalizations? We, we certainly hope so, um, and, and that, that everything indicates that that's what the cases would be. Uh, and, but we need to think about those who are not vaccinated because, they, uh, because this Delta variant is more uh, transmissible and does cause greater illness. Uh, there still could be significant hospitalizations for those people who have not been vaccinated. Dr. Heyer, certainly appreciate your time this afternoon. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.